Hi guys, my name is Tadeu Primo. I'm a NR line pilot here in Brazil. I have about 4,000 hours of experience. Am I also a computer science analyst with about 12 years in this role? So I have a good background in technology and uh, also in aviation. For this tutorial, we need four softwares that I will show you here. First one that we're going to need is the GPU Z. The link is in the description below. You can download the software and open here in sensors. We're going to monitor this parameter here, GPU load. We need to have this software because we have a lot of variations about how the GPU is loaded. So this software will have a a good parameter for us to monitor. So this one is essential. The other software will be Oculus Debug Tool. To open the software, we will need to reach the spoiler, program files, Oculus support, Oculus Diagnostics, and then it's recommended to create a shortcut in the desktop. We're gonna use a lot of the software, or we can pin here in the start. Opening the Debug Tool, we will have the settings. The next software will be the Oculus Client. Same folder, program files, Oculus support, Oculus Client, and opening the Oculus Client. Here we're gonna change devices, quest, and then graphic preferences. We're gonna use 72 recommended for the start of this tutorial, and then you need to change here to 1.3. Do it now because inside the X-Plane, we are able to only reduce resolution. We are not able to bump up the resolution, okay? Change it now. Click OK. The next one will be the OpenXR Toolkit. Notice that we are using the version 0.0.0. .0. This is the only one version that we work with X-Plane, and we need to have that. You will see that every time that we open the software, it will claim that we have a newer version, but we will not update this software, okay? We need to have this one. The link is in the description below. As soon as you open the software, you need to run the X-Plane for the first time, and then the X-Plane will appear here. So you just check the X-Plane, and then the next time that we open X Plane, the software will be inside the same. Now I'll just make a quick overview about the resolution for the Quest 2 and the Quest 3. The Quest 2 resolution is about 1080 and 1090 pixels per eye. The Quest 2 is a little bit more, 2000 by 2020 per eye. And uh, the refresh rate of the panels are in 120 the maximum. But remember that we are able to change it to 72, 80, 90, and 120, that it's the maximum hertz for this panel. Now, another topic that I would like to talk about is about the V-Sync or G-Sync technology. It's just a quick overview about the technology for you to understand. When we have a monitor or a panel like this one that have G-Sync technology, all the frames that are being generated from our graphics card will be synchronized with what refresh rate that this monitor are able to achieve. For example, with the G-Sync technology, the monitor can change the frame rate with uh, what is being generated by the GPU. In this case, if my graphics card are generating, for example, 52 frames per second, my monitor are able to adapt the refresh rate to reach the same pace of my graphics card. In this case, we will have a lot smoother experience because everything is synchronized. But again, this is something that is not built in any headset nowadays. The refresh rate inside the headset are always fixed, and that's something that people are not talking about. In monitors with the G-Sync technology, it's possible to have fluctuations in your frames per second. If your simulator are running from 42 to 47 frames per second, your monitor will adapt the same hertz that you are receiving from your GPU to show you the same frames and you have a smooth experience in this case. This is not true here in VR. If your frame rate are fluctuating from 42 to 47 frames per second inside VR, the frame rate that your simulator is generating is not synchronized with the refresh rate that you are having inside the VR panels. Okay, but why you are talking about G-Sync technology and VR? Nothing related at all. In VR, we are doing fast and large movements, rotation movements and translate movements. That's why it's important to have constant frame rate. If you say that you are reaching 46, 47, and 48 frames per second, it's impossible to have smoothness if your frame rate is not synchronized. If your headset is set to 72 hertz, your frame rate needs to be at 72, not 71, and not 73. You need to be exactly at the 72. But it's almost impossible to have 72 frames per second in flight simulator nowadays because we are talking about huge resolutions inside the headset. So it's impossible to have graphics card that are able to maintain 72 frames per second all the time. So save this information right now and we're going to talk about that in a few minutes. Now let's open the Quest link. As we can open by here in Quick in Launch or we are able also to have here in Settings, Quest link, Launch link. If you are a developer, you are able to enable custom settings. Every time that you plug your headset in your PC, it will open the Quest link automatically. So let's go open here, Quest link and Launch. You probably already know that every time that you open the Quest link, all the settings inside of the book tool will be resetted. But to make your life easier, I will create this bat file that you are able to change everything in here inside with only one click. This bat file will only open the Oculus Debug tool and then run this file that is in the same folder. This file will set the pixel display override to 2 and the field of view in 70%, 0 0.7, 0 0.7. If we leave everything here as default, 0, as soon as I run this file, everything will be changed as soon as I open the Oculus Debug tool. I will leave both files in the description of this video. Just download it, put it in your C drive. It will create this uh, VR folder and then both files will be there inside. You are asking me why we are using so much pixel override resolution. Again, in x we will be only able to reduce resolution. We will not able to bump up the resolution. It's our x 12 limitation, so we need to do that first before enter the simulator, okay? Another thing about the Debug tool is that all these settings here until the Oculus Link are not saved. Every time that we close Oculus Debug Tool, everything will be lost. Only over the Oculus Link, those things will be saved every time that we restart the Oculus Debug Tool. For bitrate, I use 500. I think it's more than enough. Distortion curvature, I use in high because the center of the image will have more pixels than the areas on the perimeter of the vision. 
As soon as we change anything here in the book tool, we can close it and now it's time to open the X-Plane. My recommendation here is to create a scenario, for example, using the heaviest aircraft that you have, select your worst airport, weather, clear, and in the daylight, for example. It's important that you have the scenario saved here because we will start and restart the simulator a lot of times to make sure that the performance that we are trying to achieve is constant. Now that we are inside the sim, to get inside and outside VR, usually I use this uh, keyboard VR, toggle enable VR hardware, I use this key. Every time I click the key, we get inside and outside VR easily. My quest is locked with the screen always on because I have the developer mode enabled. That's why I have this possibility to do not use the headset and have the screens always on. Just make my life easier. Now let's go inside VR and explain. I'm just hitting the, the control key here to open VR. Control F2 to open XR Toolkit. If you don't know how to use OpenXR Toolkit, I recommend you to read everything about the OpenXR Toolkit's website that is in the description below. Here I will just show the most important features that we're going to use here inside the sim. First of all, we will reduce the resolution to the minimal as possible. Sharpness I will run in 100%. Look at the difference between 100% and 0%. It's huge. We will enable frames per second to be able to see the things that we are changing are making an effect. System override resolution. We're going to use no and then we're going to go out of VR and inside VR again. Now that we are inside VR, we were using pixel override in 2, the field of view in 7.7.7, 7, 7, and then we are using 43% of our GPU to run the flight simulator to 36 frames per second. But why we are running at 36 frames per second? Because 72 hertz is the refresh rate that we are using our panels in the Quest. If I change to 80 hertz, this plane is 80 hertz. it changed my panel to 80 hertz, and now my frames per second in 4 is 40 frames per second. If I change here again to 90 hertz, this plane 90 hertz. we are using a little bit more of GPU resources, and if I, I use force half of refresh rate, I will reach 45 frames per second. And now the GPU load in 50, 52%. To make sure everything that we are setting is really taking an effect, the best thing to do is open the OpenXR Toolkit, bump up the resolution. Remember the native resolution from the, the Quest 3 is 2000 by 2020, something like next to the native resolution. 2000 by 2020, remember, we doubled the pixel override. So in this case, we are in 50%, we are able to achieve the native resolution from the headset. Let's get out of VR, clicking again, Control and Control again, and now look up the GPU load that we are using to maintain this, this 45 frames a second, and GPU load is in 76, 76%. Let's change again the graphic preferences to 72 Hz. Display in 72 Hz. Now our displays are in 72 Hz, and we are able to achieve the half of refresh rate, 36 frames per second, right? Okay, but my goal here is always have at least 75% of GPU usage. Why only 75%? My recommendation is never go further than 75% of GPU load, because you need to have GPU resources for, for when you are arriving in an airport that have a lot of traffic, that we have uh, a rain coming to the airport and we will face a lot of things that will be GPU demanding. So we need to have this space in your GPU resources. Well, 75 is a good number because you will be fluctuating between 75 to 85, 90% sometimes. Anytime that you reach more than 95%, you will have stutters because we need to maintain always this 36 frames per second. Why? Again, we don't have just sync technology in your headset. Our headset have fixed refresh rate now that we are in 72 Hertz. If I disable the space warp here, our explain we will be able to achieve 59, 6 frames per second. Do you think 58 frames per second or 36 frames per second will be smoother than 58? What do you think? I'll just show you with numbers. Numbers never lies. Okay, we'll change here to latest timing and I will show you what the effect that we are seeing inside the headset when you disable the space warp here, for example. Look at that. This graph shows how smooth is the experience inside VR, especially the continuous frames. We are having 55, 56 frames per second, 60 sometimes, but the experience inside the VR, it's always jumping. You will not have a smooth at all in this configuration. Now, let's see here using the half of the refresh rate of the panel. Our panel is in 72 Hertz, right? And the frames per second, when we lock in half of refresh rate, will be in 36, lock it. But look this graph, how smooth. This is exactly what you will see in the movements inside the cockpit. This graph needs to be constant. So you are telling me that we need to have the half of the frame rates that we are using in the refresh rate in the panels, right? The solution is just lock the frames per second in 36, right? That will not work. I will show you with numbers again. Now we're gonna disable. Now we are reaching six frames per second here. And for example, I will lock the frame rate using the Riva Turner in 36 frames per second. You can see here in this graph that we are having our worst experience ever inside the headset because the frame is jumping all around. So it's impossible to have a smooth in the movements, especially. So I will lock in 36 frames per second and look at that. We have, again, this smoothness. But as soon as we try to, to move, sometimes we have a lot of stutters. You can see here, when we are trying to move, the graph is not smooth at all. But we can do that here inside the individual control panel, locking the frames per second inside the same to 36, but will not have the same effect. The only way to have a good system that locks the frame rate is using the Oculus Debug tool. There's no way to use other form that will be able to achieve smoothness. You need to understand that we are trying to lock our frame rate in the half of refresh rate using an Oculus tool that is available to do that. We are talking about the headset. We are not talking about frames per second that we are seeing the monitor. The only way to lock your frame rate inside the headset is using the Debug tool. There's no another way to do that.
Oculus Debug 2 is a software that were developed for the Quest Go or the Quest 1. During that time, the Quest 1 think it's only capable to run at 90 Hz. That's why the name here it's force 45 frames per second. But what they mean with this uh, setting here is to have refresh rate. So in this case that we are using 72 Hertz in your headset, when you use force 45, is the name that you are looking for is half refresh rate. Force half refresh with, with the space warp disable. And what is the difference from enable and disable in space warp? Let's get outside the aircraft and then I will show you the difference from disable to enable. Half of refresh rate. Disable, we are now in 72 Hertz here. We are reaching 36 frames per second inside the sim because we are locked in half of refresh rate, right? But in fast movements, we are in 72, but we are creating only half of the frames per second. That's why sometimes we will see some ghosting during the fast movements. This is normal. To be able to remove this ghosting, we can change here to half a refresh rate with a space warp enable. The headset will now create artificial frames to match the 72 hertz. The flight simulator is running at 36, but the quest is now creating one frame more between frames to be able to achieve 72 frames for your vision here inside the headset. This is a great technology because it's a way to create frames without using a lot of resources. We disable or enable the GPU usage is almost the same. It's like a 2 3% more to have this feature. But there's something that is not right with this technology. Fast movements, when we have this technology enabled, you will notice that we have a lot of distortion. Look at this winglet. When we change the movements, we see that the parts of the winglet are having this distortion, especially in the edges of the winglet. That's why it's almost impossible to use this in VR because every time that we move fast inside the cockpit, we have this kind of uh, blur distortion that is so disgusting. That's why I can't use this technology. Let's get out of cockpit now and I will show you the rest of the settings that we have here in the debug tool. One of those settings is the link sharpening. I'll try to show you from the lenses what is the difference between disable and now normal quality. We have a great jump in clarity from disable. You see that the image is now not that much crisper. And now enable. Now that we are inside the cockpit again, let's talk about field of view. Let's change it to one that is native resolution. In this case, we will be rendering 100% of our field of view. Why this is not good for VR? I use glasses. Even if I put my headset really close to the lenses, I will not able to see the edges of the image because my eyes are not that close of the lenses. So in this case, I'm wasting resources of my graphics card because I'm rendering an image that I'm not even able to see. Let's start with a number that is not logical. This is 100% of the screen that is being rendering. I will do that. Only 10%, 0.1 and 0.1 here. Let's get out of VR. Control apostrophe, control again. Now we are inside VR and I will show you what you will see inside the headset right now. Look at the size of the image that you are seeing now inside the headset. It's tiny. Only 10% of the display is being rendered. But you need to understand that. Look at the resolution of this panel inside the headset. You can see that you are able to read even the smallest text or the smallest number. The image is crystal clear in this tiny space because we are rendering 2020 pixels only in 10% of our panel. This is absolutely not usable. It's too little space to see inside the headset, right? Now let's change to 50%. Look at the difference. Go out of VR, inside VR again. Using 50% of the screen, we will see the black bars around the image, but we are able to run 2000 by 2020 resolution only in this 50%. The pixels will be completely packed in the center of the image. So we have a lot of clarity doing that. In my configuration, I use 70%. 70% of the panel will be rendered. 30% will not be rendered, will be some black bars in the side of the screen. But if you use 100% of your displays, now get out of VR, get inside VR again. Look at the displays right now. This is not sharper. You need to understand that if the field of view is important for you, if you need to have 100% of your field of view enabled in your headset, you never have a sharper image, especially in the center of the image. You will not be able to have both worlds at the same time, full resolution and full field of view. You need to choose between one or another. I will show you again the difference from 100% of the image being rendered and now 50% of the image being rendered. Now 50%, look how clear is the image, especially in the, the center. Okay, from 50% to now 100% again, 100%, and you see that we lost a lot of quality. The great balance between how compact are the pixels in center of the image and the field of view, for me, it's 70%. Maybe for you, it's 80%, because maybe field of view is more important for you than it's for me. 70% of the field of view, and for me, this is comfortable, so you need to try yourself. Using 70%, you will still see the black bars around your image. You will feel like you are using a binocular vision that you are inside a tunnel. When you start to use this configuration, you will see that a few days and you will not notice anymore these black bars around the image. The balance between the quality that I have in the middle of the image compensated the quality that we lose around the edges. Now that we know about the field of view, let's talk about resolution. I'm using only 64% of my RTX 4080. As I mentioned in the beginning, 75%, 80% is something that I'm trying to achieve. When we disable 
the space warp, we are telling to the Oculus and to the GPU to render the max frame rate. We are achieving 56, 58 frames per second, all right? Again, you are not synchronizing with your refresh rate, right? So we are having stutters inside the headset. You can see here in this graph, we are having a lot of stutters. If you move inside the headset right now, it's a garbage. And we are now using 92%, 93%. You can see the graph here that we are now using a lot of resources of our GPU. We are always trying to achieve this 75%. And how we're going to set our GPU to use 75 or 80%? Again, Ctrl F2 to open XR2 kit and then start to bumping up the resolution. For me here in the RTX 4080, the resolution about 24,000 and 27,000, it's something that it's achievable for my GPU. So as soon as we change here the resolution, go out of VR, Ctrl and the control apostrophe again, and now we are inside VR, and now we are using 79, 76% of our GPU in the worst case scenario. My worst aircraft, that is the Polis A320, and my scenery, that is here in Recife. I think my settings here are balanced to have a good performance in any kind of situation that we are entering. For your computer, maybe this is too high resolution. To be able to be at 80%, maybe you need to reduce the resolution to something like that, 1090 to 2000, or even lower than the native resolution. Remember, the native resolution, 2000 by 2020, maybe you need to be below that 1060 by 1070 go out of VR go inside VR again and now you will see what are the GPU loads that you are using now in my case here 54 53 percent of my GPU is being used to maintain this resolution again anytime that we reach more than 90 95 percent of our GPU probably your frames per second will, will be lower than 34 33 and do you have stutters let me show you again for you what will happen if I go further than my native resolution for example if I try to achieve 3000 in the vertical resolution here let's go out of VR get inside VR again and you will see that we will, I will not be able to achieve 36 frames per second anymore. Look, my GPU load is now 96, 95%. Using that much resources, even this system is not able to maintain the frames per second in the correct way. If I'm trying to use 36 frames per second, you'll see that as we are using too much GPU load, we are not being stable anymore. Any kind of thing that happens inside VR right now, if I move down here, that it's a little bit more taxing in the GPU resources, we are now achieving 36 and 30 three, sometimes 35 frames per second. This 35 frames per second, look how garbage will be inside the headset. A lot of stutters and the, the motion will be absolute garbage. So we need to be, as I already told you, below the 70%, 75% maximum. To achieve that, again, lower resolution. Well, 22 by 24, that is almost a native resolution from the headset. Go out of VR, go inside VR again, wait for a few seconds for everything stable. We are now at 70%, we have 37 frames per second. If we move inside the headset, we will not have any stutters, the graph is always constant and smooth, and that's how you balance everything in your inside your headset. You need to understand that you need to sacrifice something. You need to reduce the field of view to have a sharp descender of the image. You need to reduce a little bit of resolution to be able to achieve the maximum 70, 75% GPU load. If you are going further than that, you will have problems. If you are having stutters arriving in a final approach, for example, in an airport, you can go here inside the resolution, reduce a little bit, go out of VR, get inside VR again, and now probably we're gonna be below the 75, 78% that was giving stutters. And now we have a smooth experience again. Now I will show you my in-game settings, texture quality. I'm able to use in high, but again, what is your priority? If you are trying to achieve the maximum GPU load to be able to maintain 36, 36 frames per second, or if you are using 80 Hertz, 40 frames per second, our goal is to reduce everything as much as possible to be able to have GPU load available to have more resolution because resolution is more important for me. Ambient occlusion, I don't use that. Ambient occlusion inside the simulator. I'm a pilot. I need to have my panels in a good resolution. To be fair, ambient occlusion is something that is so bad represented inside the sim. RKS off. This will not work in VR, so that's why I use in zero. So do you want to use anti-aliasing? Okay, let's change the anti-aliasing to two times MSAA. Now let's get inside VR. Look, with the same resolution, that is 2000 by 22000, we will see that we are using 80% of GPU load. Now let's disable the anti-aliasing. Let's get out of VR. Let's disable anti-aliasing. Okay, get inside VR again. And now to use the same resolution, 2000 by 2020, we are using 66% of our GPU. If you think the anti-aliasing is important, you need to understand that we are using a lot of resources of our GPU only to be able to have anti-aliasing. Unfortunately, the X-Plane is not optimized at all to use to be using VR. We came from 66 to 80% of GPU load only by enable one step, two times the anti-aliasing. So why in Microsoft Flight Simulator, we understand that it's a modern engine, it's a new game, and there we are able to enable TAA, that is an, a new methodology of uh, anti-aliasing technology that use a lot less resources than we are seeing here. But if I try to use four times the anti-aliasing, my computer will almost crash. It's impossible to use anti-aliasing here in X-Plane 12. Now we try to enable here in four times. Okay, jump inside VR again. And look, we are using all the GPU resources available. We are not being able to achieve 36 frames per second anymore. And look how is the, the smoothness inside the sim by this graph. It's impossible to use the anti-aliasing there. To be able to use four times the anti-aliasing, we need to reduce 
our resolution a lot, something like 1040 for 1050. Go out of VR, go inside VR again. But man, this resolution is almost unreadable. Anything inside the headset will be absolutely garbage. We will not be able to read anything inside your panels with that resolution. Now we are able to reach 72% of our GPU. So again, it's something that is not optimized in x -Plane, So it's impossible to use and have a better resolution inside the scene. It's impossible to use, period. And enable FX AJ, it's not a, uh, that much impact in the performance. So I always use it on. Again, with anti-aliasing disable, we are able to crank up the resolution to have better clarity inside the headset. 2040 to 2746, okay. Jump out of VR, getting VR again. And again, we are in our goal that will be 75, 80% of our GPU usage with amazing clarity inside the headset. Again, if you want to use more than that, the minimum refresh rate that I, I want to use is 90 Hertz. Save again. Display 90 Hertz. Now, with the hyper refresh rate, we will need to maintain 45 frames per second. So we are using 95% of our GPU load, and we are not able to achieve 45. We are dipping down to 43, 44, and look how the smoothness inside the headset is right now. It's absolutely garbage again. If you want to use a higher frequency, 90 Hertz, for example, you need to maintain 45 frames per second. You will need to reduce resolution. 55, so 2000 by 2020, that is native resolution. Jump out of VR, inside of VR again, and now we are about 82, 83% of GPU load with absolutely smooth experience using 45 frames per second. Again, you want more frame rate per second, you will need to reduce the resolution. So to have clarity in VR, you need to lose in something. There's no way to have both. You want to crank up the resolution, reduce your refresh rate. We will be able to maintain a lower frames per second in the half of refresh rate here in the space warp. You will now use the same GPU load and be able to have this target between 75 and 80%. Continuing here about the inside settings, clouds. There's no difference visually from high, maximum, or low. You need to change that, look for the numbers, and see what is the difference for you. For me, as a pilot, using clouds in low and in maximum, there's no difference at all visually. So why you are using in maximum? Oh, the shadow quality that I use is only inside the cockpit. Rendering distance. I use another program, 3J FPS. Here, I'm able to control the distance of the, the objects on the fly. If I'm arriving in an airport and I'm seeing others, I'm able to reduce this dynamically. At night, the objects are not visible and the lights are not connected with the object. So why you are rendering a lot of objects that you are not seeing during the nighttime? Using no objects, we are able to achieve 106 frames per second. And now using objects that we are not able to see and reduce the quality of your lights during night time, we are able to achieve only 68 frames per second from 100 to 68 frames per second. World object density and vegetation density, the difference will be from this to this in maximum. Again, I'm a pilot. I'm not looking for anything when I'm in a final approach during my planning. So why I will have this beauty's density if I'm not looking for that? So that's why I use the medium for both vegetation and buildings. Game mode settings, disable, hardware acceleration GPU scheduling, off, and NVIDIA settings, everything default except power management mode to maximum performance. There's the only one thing that I changed here inside the, the settings. I already tested everything here inside. That's something that I noticed in the last few years that we are using Vulkan and x 12. Nothing will work inside the settings here. You will have a bad time if you come to this video trying to look for numbers that I use here in my setup to use in your computer. That will not work, brother. Look at this video that I recorded using a GTX 1660. Do you believe that? And uh, an i5 9600K. Lock at 30 frames per second and use a hyper refresh rate in the Quest 2 using that hardware. If you have a better hardware than that, you need to be able to achieve smoothness by any means between all those parameters that we need to change. You need to have a reference. So using the GPU-Z, you are able to understand each parameter that you change inside the sim, what is the effect that it has. And you will see that instantly. Some parameters are changed only once before you enter the sim. You need to experiment. You need to change the things and make sure that the changes that you are doing are making an effect. And the only way to know that the effect is being achieved is looking for numbers. There's no way to do that using healing. It's impossible to know that. I think that's it for this video, guys. I was trying to make you understand that everything that you change inside the simulator have an effect. Even with a 4080 and the i5-13600K, I need to reduce everything to the minimal to be able to bump up the resolution and have a good experience in VR. You need to understand that even the smallest things make the huge difference in the final image that you are able to achieve, especially in the smoothness. If you are trying to render a lot of things at the same time, you need to have your priorities straight. If you are trying to land in a complex scenery with a heavy aircraft during night time, during a thunderstorm, you need to understand that you should reduce your resources to be able to have less GPU load and not be below that threshold of frames per second. So that's it for today. If you have any doubt, please leave a comment below. If you think that this knowledge that I tried to share is something that is valuable for you, please leave a like. That's it. Let's jump in a flight now and have fun. Bye.